an indescribably chilling sensation burst from Art's mana core as he activated Realmheart. Liquid frost coursed through his veins, desperately seeking a way out of his body. He watched the golden runes begin to form on his arms, glowing hotly against his frigid skin as his vision began to achromatize. I was only able to catch a glimpse of what your runes looked like earlier, but it truly is fascinating, Meyer mumbled to herself as she studied him. Remaining seated and motionless as his caretaker inspected the markings on his body, Art was enthralled by what he was experiencing. This was the first time he had actually taken a step back to study the changes in his perception while using Realm Heart, watching the different particles move as if they each possessed intellect and had a goal in mind, made him realize why magic was more accurately described as mana manipulation in this world. Testing out a hunch, Art willed a small ember to appear at the tip of his finger. Sure enough, the red particles around him began to react as he conjured the fire. Even though he had used the refined mana from his core, there was a definite response to the particles around him. He repeated this, using spells from different elements to see the response in the particles. In each case, only the purple specks remained unchanged. Having fun, are we? Meyer was still in her realm heart form as well. Her soft purple eyes peered at him as the corners of her lips curled upward in amusement. How is it that I've never noticed this? Art asked, more to himself than to her. It's understandable that you would assume this form was some power-up rather than a means to observe and study what cannot normally be perceived. She finished examining his arm and let go of it, then took a few steps back. I'm not exactly sure how long you're able to stay in this form, but there are a few things I want you to see before you release Realm Heart. The Asura raised a hand in front of her, drawing Art's focus as her eyes narrowed in concentration. Suddenly, the purple particles around them, which had refused to comply with Art's will, began to drift slowly toward Meyer. Each tiny glimmer of purple moved differently from the others. It appeared the Asura was not so much manipulating mana as herding a legion of tiny fireflies toward her hand. As I mentioned earlier, Ether behaves fundamentally differently from mana. You will be met with only failure if you try to manipulate ether as you have done with mana. Let me reiterate my point with the cup of water analogy since it has worked so well for us until now. You can drink, gargle, and spit out water as long as you know how, but you would be a fool if you tried the same thing with the cup. Ether is present all around us, yet it is the very boundary that confines you and me to the limits we have. As she spoke, the particles of ether began drifting around the hand she held up until it was completely enveloped. Vivum, the influence over all living components, this is the power I use to piece back together your shattered legs. After learning that my affinity lay with the branch of life, I studied Vivum for centuries. However, even so, I am not confident that I can explain to you what you truly wish to know, she confessed solemnly. What I can explain certainty is limited. I want to learn. Art stared at her, determined to grasp what he could. Her eyes remained solemn, but a slight smile formed. Very well. The first thing you need to know is that, unlike mana, you cannot absorb ether. You are merely changing its presence and influence on reality. Does that mean a core isn't needed to influence ether? An individual's core is what connects the body to the physical realm, so while ether isn't directly manipulated in the way that mana is, the mana core is crucial, she responded. Meyer's words were simple enough, but they reflected a wisdom far deeper than arts. You will realize your path when the time comes, but since you are still in the beginning stages of your cultivation, it is best not to overwhelm you with knowledge that is not yet necessary, she continued, smiling gently at him. For now, just know that after a certain point, your cultivation will no longer depend on your rote ability to refine mana, but rather on gaining insight into knowledge that cannot be passed down. Art pondered over Meyer's cryptic words. His brain was itching with questions, but he knew now wasn't the time to be asking them. Meyer nodded in contentment as Art waited for her to continue. I'm not sure if this is mere coincidence or fate, but there is a reason why you have the ability, as limited as it is, 
to utilize ether. Can you guess what it is? I thought it was because of Sylvia's will, Art answered. It is partly because of Sylvia's will that you are able to bear the burden of ether, but that is not the reason you are able to manipulate it. There was only one other answer that came to mind. Is it because I can manipulate all four elements? Precisely, Meyer exclaimed. It was the insight into all four of the fundamental elements that allowed us to take a look beyond the water and become aware of the glass cup that we are held in. Doesn't the ability to manipulate, influence, ether, as the basic building block of our reality, mean dragons are much stronger than the other races? Art remarked. Shaking her head, the Asura clarified, we certainly hold a fair advantage over the other races. We dragons have the ability to control ether, but to what extent? Even the most powerful dragons are only able to scratch the surface of ether's boundless possibilities. However, the other races hold much deeper insight into the element to which they are predisposed. Art had lost track of time as they talked, and now he began to feel his strength, leaving him from using Realmheart for so long. Noticing his strained expression, Meyer suggested that he withdraw the ability. Color began permeating back into the world as Art released Realmheart. As always, the runes were the last part of the transformation to disappear. So, Meyer, were you able to tell which quality of ether I am best suited for? Art asked, letting out a relieved breath. Yes, but before you get too excited, allow me to forewarn you that even I cannot predict whether or not you will be able to consciously control ether like we can. You possess the ability to manipulate all four elements and have gained both a dragon's will and the realm heart physique, but you are still a human. Her message was harsh, but her words held no pretension or condescension. I see, Art muttered. He would have been lying if he said he wasn't disappointed. In a world where humans coexisted with other, more powerful races, he was beginning to see that there was an invisible ceiling to his progress something he had been ignorant of in his past life. As I mentioned before, one cannot compare ether to mana. Ether can be thought of as an organism, almost sentient, which needs to be coaxed and coerced into action. The manipulation of ether therefore places a heavy burden on the caster. You've probably felt this every time you use the time manipulation ability. You're right. And no matter how many times I've used it, it doesn't get any easier, Art confessed leaning against the wooden headboard of his bed. And I doubt it ever will. My dear, I'm unsure as to why you were, albeit briefly, able to manipulate time. But you were never meant to go down the path of Avum. Taking out a pen and a small parchment from the nightstand drawer, she began drawing some symbols. Arthur, you were able to tap into ether manipulation because of Sylvia's will but I don't imagine you were able to get a grasp of how it works. In terms of theory, I still have no idea, Art acknowledged reluctantly. Using the first phase of Sylvia's will had allowed him to stop time for a brief moment, but when he had used that ability, it felt like he was simply looking at a manuscript in a foreign language. He could see what it looked like, but he had no idea how to read it or what it meant. This is why. Meyer held up the small paper she had been writing on, revealing an array of familiar symbols. Like Sylvia, you were meant to control the very fabric of the boundaries that keep the physical realm in place. You are of the Spatium genus. Despite the revelation, Art wasn't happy. Not at all. But, as you've said, regardless of this knowledge, it's still possible that I won't be able to consciously control this ability. Meyer regarded him with a solemn gaze but didn't respond. From what you've told me so far, I was only able to even use the time manipulation ability because it was pre-embedded into the will Sylvia imparted to me before she was killed. Art was doing his best to contain his frustration, but his voice was growing steadily louder. Please, Meyer, tell me what I need to do. So far, all I know about this grand ability is that I have the qualifications for it. But because of the physical limitations of my species, I won't be able to handle the burden. The Asura stayed quiet for a long time, doing nothing but combing softly through Art's ruffled hair. I truly pity you, child. You have such overwhelming potential for greatness, but your capacity, 
is hindered by something you cannot control. The reason I have told you all these things is not to mock you for something you will never be able to accomplish, but rather to encourage you to do something beyond the ordinary. Even as you progress into the white stage and beyond, you may be unable to control ether like dragons can, but that does not mean you do not have that ability at your disposal. Knowledge is an immeasurable strength, and with it, you may find a way past the boundaries of your birth, something even the Asuras do not yet see. You're right. I'm sorry for taking my frustrations out on you. I know you only want what is best for me, Art whispered. Yes, my child. Only what is best for you, she echoed. When Art looked up at Meyer, however, her face was deeply lined with an expression of sorrow. What's wrong? Arthur, I have broken many rules by imparting all this knowledge to you. This knowledge can certainly be used against the dragon race if it falls into the wrong hands. So please believe me when I say this. I truly do want what is best for you. Art couldn't figure out why Meyer had shown so much care for him, but if there was one thing he had learned in his previous life, it was how to read the intentions of those around him. The Asura meant well, despite the fact that they barely knew each other. Even if Realmheart cannot be utilized to its full extent, it can be an incomparable asset in the coming battles because of its sensory functions. With Realmheart, your ability to manipulate all four elements and your remarkable combat prowess you have many tools at your disposal. Meyer's voice trailed off, filling Art with apprehension for her next words. But, Art asked. Letting out a deep breath, she took a moment and stared into Art's eyes. But this movement technique that you've created, the one that brought you into my home in such a horrid state, it cannot be one of them. As if her words weren't clear enough already, she spoke once more. Never use that technique again. At Meyer's ominous warning, Art remained silent. Numb, almost. He'd had a hunch that this might have been the case after ending up here, but her words made his predicament all too real. His mind spun, trying to weave together a way to refute the Asura's verdict. However, nothing came to mind. Regardless of how much mana he infused to strengthen his body, what he was doing with Burst Step was directly stimulating the muscles to such a degree that... Apparently, it would tear them, and his bones, to pieces. He'd always thought this world held the potential for limitless possibilities, with magic at the epicenter of it all. But now he saw that no matter where one wound up, there would always be a ceiling, keeping those who wished to venture into the unknown caged in. He sighed, gazing up at the wooden ceiling above them. I know you spent a lot of time developing this mana art, and it's rude of me to pry this secret out of you, but how does your movement technique work exactly? Meyer asked, a twinkle of interest apparent in her hazy green eyes. First, Art told her how he had come across the idea of the skill. Meyer already knew the foundations of Mirage Walk, which the Thyestes clan had engineered, so that saved him some time. He then explained the basic mechanics of how he had improved Mirage Walk from its initial concept. To put it simply, Mirage Walk was a passive skill that was used to hide the user's mana fluctuation. Recounting the months he had spent trying to get a consistent handle on Burst Step sent a painful ache down his chest as it finally hit him that all that work was for naught. It had been the first time he had developed a mana art that went beyond the boundaries of this world, since it was only possible with the knowledge he had from his previous life. But he couldn't tell her that. Instead, he told her how he first came across the idea. Fascinating, said Meyer, deep in thought. To utilize the intricacies of the body to such a degree, I never would have thought of something like that. I was shocked to see your body in such a state at first, but now, hearing how this movement technique worked, it's a wonder your legs weren't permanently crippled, she continued, still in awe. It doesn't matter now, does it? I can't use the skill without shattering my body and tearing up my muscles, so I'll have to think of some other way to prepare for this upcoming war. Art shrugged, trying to keep his bitterness from showing. Feel free to use it, Meyer, as a thank you for healing my legs. My child, I have to say I have very little confidence in being able to replicate what you've just explained to me. The sheer amount of control and intricate fine-tuning one would need to execute this burst step properly is beyond my grasp. 
she confessed with a chuckle. I've grown complacent with old age. I have sought out the hidden mysteries of Vivum, abandoning the practical uses of mana long ago. Rest assured, your secret skill will end with me. Thank you. But her words offered little comfort in Art's current dilemma. Meyer, I'm feeling a bit drowsy. Of course, my dear, the Asura answered immediately. Casting him one last sympathetic gaze, she blew out the candles lighting the room and left. The hut darkened, and Art's eyes could only make out the thin pillars of moonlight that made it past the thatched roof. The specks, dust, and ashes from the smoldering remains in the fireplace danced in the streams of soft, white light, filling the small space with an alluring ambiance. Telling Meyer that he wanted to sleep was a lie. Sleeping was the last thing he wanted to do. He had already wasted enough time as it was. Art closed his eyes, analyzing his current situation. His breakthrough into the Silver Core stage was more than a pleasant surprise, since his core was refined to the mid-level stage. The amount of mana he could now utilize through this advancement, along with mana rotation, was several times higher than it had previously been. His hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities had also taken quite a leap forward thanks to Cordry. Coupled with his sword mastery, they would place him easily into the AA class as an adventurer even without the use of elemental magic. Despite all this, however, Art had little to show in terms of improvement in magic or mana arts. He had hoped to learn a thing or two about how Asuras manipulated mana, but so far he had learned next to nothing in that area. The Asuras had provided him with excellent training in the best environment possible to make sure he was heading in the right direction, but they seemed unwilling to impart any secrets regarding their fluency in mana manipulation. Mirage Walk was the only technique he had managed to piece together, and while it was an important asset, it would have little impact in a large-scale battle. There was a sense of mystery and wonder when it came to mana manipulation, not nearly as much as Aether, but still there. Decathan was a place of unimaginable experiences and possibilities compared to Art's previous world, but compared to Ephiotis or even Alacria, his home continent was an infant regarding knowledge and comprehension of mana. There were actual Asuras residing in Alacria, and it was safe to assume that, throughout the ages, they'd shared some of their knowledge of mana with the inhabitants. From the perspective of a war leader, if Agrona wanted to take over Dickathan, he needed enough forces to not only successfully invade the continent, but also to protect his clan from the Asuras of Ephiotis who, Art could safely assume, were eagerly waiting for the Vritras to show some sign of weakness. Art reflected on the intel provided by Cynthia Goodsky to the Council of Dickathan, subsequently conveyed to the Asuras by Aldir. He was certain that proper defensive measures were being taken, but the lack of a comprehensive briefing left him pondering about the enemy force's abilities, a daunting prospect. His thoughts then shifted to the capabilities of the four scythes and their retainers. According to the report from Winsome, a single retainer had the potential to decimate a team led by a lance. Could Art, with his current power level, take down a retainer? The uncertainty lingered. Alea Triskin, the lance who fell victim, had been at the white stage, possessing significant raw power, even with the artifacts bestowed upon the lances. The ease with which they dispatched her warned Art against underestimating a retainer. The remainder of the night blurred into a mix of vague lucidity and fitful sleep. As the morning sun bathed the cottage in warm light, Art found himself grappling with the uncertainties surrounding the upcoming challenges. Art extended his hand towards the vacant pail positioned beside his bed, retrieving it and placing it on his lap. Employing mana, he collected water into his palms, splashing his face in an attempt to shake off the weariness. Meyer's voice resonated from the hut's periphery. I take it you had a rough night? Can you tell? Art quipped, feeling invigorated by the cool water. The shadows beneath your eyes have practically reached your chin, she remarked with a chuckle as she approached. She uncovered Art, proceeding to delicately unwrap the bandages encasing his leg. With a meticulous gaze, she examined him, and he noticed that her eyes mirrored the same lavender hue as when she utilized Realm Heart. Good. The bones in your legs have set well enough for me to fully treat them now. 
I had to work in stages in case the bones and muscles decided to start mending improperly, Meyer explained. While speaking, she glided her hands down his legs, leaving faint traces of silvery mist in their wake. Gradually, the mist permeated his skin and immersed into his legs, and wisps of silver fire crackled along the scar tissue. Initially, a gentle tingling sensation marked the return of sensation to Art's once numb legs. However, it didn't take long for that mild tingle to evolve into an agonizing pain, searing every inch of his legs. Had Art not known that Meyer was actively repairing his legs, the intensity of the pain might have driven him to consider drastic measures. He struggled against the discomfort, compounded by the urge to urinate, adding an additional layer of unease to the mounting waves of pain. It didn't feel like Art's legs were being healed. Instead, it seemed as though the Asura was cultivating a new pair of legs for him in the most agonizing manner possible. A choked cry escaped him as he clawed at the bed, attempting to divert his attention from the excruciating pain. I should have warned you about the pain. I'm basically forcing your body to heal itself at a hyper-increased rate. The torn tendons and muscles are trying to reattach themselves to the bones, which is why you're feeling the way you do, Meyer explained, her focus remaining on Art's legs as beads of sweat formed above her thin brows. It took approximately 10 minutes before the pain gradually began to subside. By the end of the treatment, Art was cautiously flexing his toes. With Meyer's approval, he brought his legs to the edge of the bed, cautiously putting weight on one foot and then the other before attempting to stand up. Unfortunately, his legs immediately buckled under his weight, causing him to fall onto his side. Be careful. Your legs are fully healed but you've lost a lot of musculature in your lower body. You are going to be weaker than you think, Meyer said evenly. There's no pain or discomfort at least, Art replied, his excitement momentarily pushing away the dark pall of the previous night's conversation. His legs did feel weaker, but that would only be temporary. He had full control. This does not change the fact that you cannot use burst step anymore. It would be harder for me to heal them each time and I will not be able to mend you at all when you are back in Dickathan. I understand. Once more, Art tried the simple task of standing up. This time he was able to keep himself upright, although his legs trembled. After an hour or so of steadily hobbling around inside the cottage, leaning against the furniture and walls for support, he knew what he had to do. Art went outside to the back of the cottage to relieve himself, then spent a few minutes stretching outside taking in the crisp morning air, which smelled of dew. I thought about what you said yesterday, my dear, Meyer called from the porch, concerning your inability to act on the information I shared with you. Shaking his head, Art replied, I'm sorry about that, Meyer. I said that out of frustration. You've told me things I would never be able to learn elsewhere. I have come to realize just how far behind Dickathan is when it comes to knowledge of mana. The inhabitants of Dickathan have come a long way, considering how short a time it's been since they began experimenting with mana through the artifacts we gave them. Walking out of the hut, she waved for Art to follow, making her way toward a perfectly tended and trimmed lawn of grass. Even I am limited in what I am allowed to disclose, but since this is knowledge you already have, I can nudge you in the right direction a little, she said, standing a few yards away from him. I'm not following. Art replied, looking around at their surroundings. There was nothing nearby except the dense clusters of trees that towered over them, making the cottage and trimmed front lawn look very out of place. Don't worry, I've already informed Winsome that I'll be borrowing you for a bit longer. The air changed around them as Meyer activated her realm heart. The light gold runes glowed softly beneath her sleeves, and her misty green eyes shifted to radiant lavender. Now, my boy, Consider every magical spell you know, and using whichever combination you like, hit me with all you have. Art looked at Meyer, standing frail and thin in the field of grass, and hesitated to follow her command. However, a dreadful pressure erupted from the delicate-looking Asura that wiped out any concerns he had of injuring her. He felt more like he'd be the one in danger if he didn't comply with her instructions. All right. Art gathered mana into his hands, 
but before he could begin to form the spell he had intended to conjure, Meyer's voice rang out. In your right palm, you're preparing a compressed water sphere while your left hand will shoot a small gust of wind. Child, I told you to hit me with all you have. She was exactly right. Ignoring her taunts, Art fired his two spells and immediately concentrated on the area beneath her feet. You are planning on rupturing the ground under me, which is a clever idea, but I would prefer you didn't ruin the grass, she said, as she casually avoided Art's wind and water spells. Meyer stomped the ground softly. Before the spell could even take effect, she had already canceled it. Art's mouth hung agape for a moment before he regained his composure. His mind shifted back to yesterday. She had explained that Realmheart could be used to heighten perception, but he had never expected it to be to this degree. As I said, this is an ability you already have, she chuckled, tapping his temple. I'm simply nudging you in the right direction. You didn't look out for the spell behind you, my dear, Meyer reprimanded. Proper interpretation of mana fluctuation starts with sensing the spells just as they affect the physical realm. Then you utilize Realm Heart to accurately determine what form they will take. Even if your opponent chooses to vocalize their spell, it is what they are imagining that will actually affect the size, shape, and duration of that spell. Some mages use a vocal projection as a feint to trick their opponent. Art was able to make sense of Meyer's advice, but it was becoming harder to stay conscious. He was losing a lot of blood from the gaping wound through his shoulder. The Asura continued debriefing him on the mistake that had led to his injury as she healed him using ether. This wasn't the first time something like this had happened since he'd started his training, or even the seventh time for that matter. He had failed numerous times to properly analyze the flow of mana before it had materialized into a spell, which had given him ample opportunity to notice that Meyer's healing, through the use of ether, was fundamentally different than his mother's healing spells. The limits that applied to his mother, or any other healing mage, didn't exist for Meyer. She was able to heal ailments, close gaping holes, even regrow missing limbs, which left him wondering, why hadn't Meyer simply cut off his legs and grown him new ones? From what Meyer had explained to Art, it seemed that using ether past a certain threshold came with costs. It didn't happen for all the spells she used, or even most for that matter. However, using ether to grow a whole new limb would mean she had to extract the ether that was sustaining the life of something or someone else. I know what you're thinking when you're faced with the spells, child. The Asura's voice startled him back into focus. Don't get ahead of yourself and try to counter the spell before it manifests. It took me decades to get it right, and that was considered fast amongst us dragons. Now, shall we call it a night? Art looked up at the sky. A thin layer of orange in the horizon was all that was left of the sun as night took over. Sounds good, he said with a smile, trailing behind her into the small cottage. The weeks had passed swiftly, marked by ceaseless training and the constant presence of the elderly Asura. However, one thing had become abundantly clear during Art's training with Meyer. The docile and mild temperament she had seemingly portrayed while nursing him back to health was a facade. While she made for pleasant company in other circumstances on the training grounds, her true personality emerged. A demonic force that rendered even Cordry's training akin to a session of petting puppies. Most unsettling was the fact that, owing to her adeptness at healing through ether, there were few constraints on her actions. She had a favorite saying, and she repeated it so often that it haunted Art's dreams. The best treatment for an injury is to prevent it from happening in the first place. So if you don't want me to injure you, prevent it. With the same sly smirk accompanying each declaration, she would utter those words just before launching a vibrant array of spells at Art, who was compelled to analyze and evade them using Realm Heart. The training wasn't confined to theory alone. Meyer went on to teach Art what to observe when a spell was on the verge of materializing. Depending on the spell type, the mana particles exhibited distinct fluctuations, making it imperative to discern these nuances within a fleeting time frame. Learning this skill felt akin to acquiring proficiency in a new language, with the added pressure that one's life hung in the balance. 
Initially frustrating, Art found the process challenging enough to contemplate asking Winsome for the ether orb to expedite his learning. However, Meyer swiftly dismissed the idea, citing the ether orb's limitations in providing an accurate understanding of how mana functioned in the physical realm. To Meyer's astonishment, Art made rapid progress in what he dubbed mana interpretation. In under a month, he achieved what had taken Meyer six months, although he acknowledged he wasn't yet prepared to apply it in an actual battle. The groundwork was laid, akin to knowing the words in a book, but achieving mastery would demand months, if not years, of practice. Over the past six weeks, each morning commenced with mana analysis. Meyer would cast spells of diverse elements into the air, sometimes directing them at art. Persistent use of Realm Heart during this training allowed him to extend the duration of the ability, though the increase was modest. In the afternoons, Meyer would conduct debriefing sessions with Art, highlighting his mistakes and pointing out nuances to improve his predictions about the potential form of a spell. Meyer's meticulous explanations regarding the behavior of Mana contributed significantly to Art's training progress. Following the debriefing, Art trained independently, practicing the various forms imparted by Cordry during shadow sparring. Despite regularly training his mana core before bedtime, there had been no substantial change since his last major breakthrough. One evening, after finishing a simple dinner of stewed beef, a clear knock echoed on the wooden door. Come in, Meyer called out, taking a careful sip from her mug. Excuse my intrusion, responded the familiar voice as the door swung open. It was Winsome. Art couldn't summon happiness upon seeing Winsome, despite months passing since their last contact. The poised Asura, his platinum blonde hair neatly cropped, unexpectedly knelt before Meyer, displaying clear respect. Art had inferred Meyer's significant influence within the Indrath clan due to her powers and the ability to keep him with her, defying the training plan with Winsome. However, Winsome's act of genuflection toward the elderly Asura raised questions in Art's mind. I apologize for coming without notice, but Lord Indrath has already arranged for Arthur's next instructor, and he is waiting rather impatiently for his student. Winsome lowered his gaze as he spoke. Very well. I do wish to keep tabs on the child, so there will be no problem if I pop in every now and then, correct? It was more an irrefutable declaration than a question. Of course not. Now we must get going. Winsome's gaze shifted to Art, signaling that he should get ready. If you'll excuse us, you should go, Arthur. Remember to continue your training with Realm Heart. Meyer ran her fingers through his hair, now long enough to be considered a mane. Of course, I'll have it mastered by the next time we see each other, he teased giving her a childish grin. Art followed Winsome out of the cottage, making their way through the dense cluster of trees surrounding Meyer's little hut. Winsome regarded him curiously as they walked. Is something wrong? Art asked, stepping over an exposed route. For Lady Meyer to take the time to not only heal you, but train you as well. Winsome's voice trailed off, and he shook his head. Your luck continues to amaze me. Ducking under a low branch, Art inquired, Who exactly is Meyer, anyway? Lady Meyer, Winsome stressed, and I'm not in the position to tell you if she hasn't told you herself. You know, when I first met you, I figured you were pretty up there. Now, not so much, Art chuckled as they continued deeper into the forest. Watch your tongue, human. Even if I were among the lowest rank of Asuras, I'd still be stronger than any of you lesser races in Dickathan, Winsome retorted. My bad. I guess I struck a nerve. Art held up a hand in concession. Winsome merely shook his head in silent exasperation. They soon reached the teleportation gate he had set up, which glowed with a radiating light, reflecting the destination it was set to. Remind me again why you set the gate so far from the cottage? Art asked, approaching it. Lady Meyer's protection field ends here, Winsome said simply as his right foot entered the glowing circle. Now come, your instructor isn't one for waiting. Winsome's body disappeared through the gate, and he followed immediately after. 
Over the years, he had gotten used to the dizzying sensation of traveling by the gates, thankfully. Art stepped out of the teleportation circle onto the sand-strewn ground and gazed in awe at the vastly different landscape they had traveled to. They were at the bottom of what appeared to be an enormous crater. Imposing walls carved by nature towered over them on all sides. It looked like water had filled this giant hole at one point in time, but the only traces left now were the silvery, ribbon-like fissures that lined the walls at varying heights. Plant life, life in general, seemed non-existent, and the harsh, arid air stung his face. The uneven floor, which spread across acres on end, appeared to be constantly moving as the wind blew and spun the sand in no particular rhythm or pattern. So my next training session is going to be here? Art confirmed, his voice quivering at the thought of spending weeks or even months there. Because he had always teleported from one training ground to the next, he didn't have a clear grasp of the size or shape of the continent of Ephaetus. If he had come here under better circumstances, he would have wanted to explore the land of Asurus. Art had spent the past half year training mostly in augmented melee combat, honing various skills and the key aspects necessary for fighting a war. Now, he would start fitting everything together into a cohesive style that utilized his elemental magic and his melee combat skills. Winsome seemed to be searching for something, his eyes scanning over the distance as he spoke. And this instructor will help me do this? Art surveyed the area around them as well. Ah, he's here, Winsome announced, ignoring Art's question. So this is him? This is the pup who's supposed to be the hero, leading Dickathan to victory against the Vritra-raised armies and their disgusting little Lesherans? A bass voice reverberated clearly from the top of the gorge. Art wanted to ask what Lesserans meant, but he bit his tongue. He'd just assume it was a degrading slur for non-Asuras. How charming. There was an insect-sized figure standing on top of the crater's edge, silhouetted against the sun shining at his back. Then he leapt down, growing larger as he descended like a meteor toward them. When he landed, Winsome and Art shielded themselves against the explosion of sand and debris that arose. As they waited for the dust cloud to clear, a large hand shot out from within the cloud and lifted Art off the ground. He struggled, even using mana, but the giant hand's grip around his waist refused to relent. As he was pulled into the cloud of debris, a firm, deep voice resonated, shaking Art to his very core. Hello, pup.